Welcome to part two of the primer. You should have already completed part one, which was how to shoot and how to process images, because now we're going to dive into retouch. This is going to be so much fun. Now, in part one of this video, we're going to start with dodging and burning. Well, more specifically, quick dodging and burning that can really add a lot of drama to your images. Let's do that. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this image of Ellie that we actually processed in the last video. OK, so from here, what I would typically do to a shot like this is I would apply a radial burn. Now, you already know how to do this. OK, so I'm going to put a radial burn onto Ellie and I'm going to go ahead and expand it. And what I would like to do is just kind of continue burning down to get to a nice look where all of the attention draws into her. Now, for this particular image, this type of heavy radial burn works nicely and it's pretty convincing because she is the brightest point in the image already right so even an exposure burn of negative one works really nice but if i was to work on another image like this well i could go that same route but i want to show you a more refined method and this is the next level of refinement in dodging and burning we refer to as quick dodging and burning but there's still advanced dodging and burning inside of Lightroom, which is even more intense. So let's do this first. I have my shot here. I'm going to take a white balance reading off the jacket and then create a virtual copy of this shot, again of my son, Ethan. And now I'm going to create a soft light. So let's go soft light as our preset. And let's go dark mode, just because we want to have some fun here. Usually once I get to dark mode, dark mode will affect exposure contrast well it affects kind of everything in the base tones um, and it'll set the exposure to negative three to give you a starting point so from here you're going to adjust it to a place where your subject is kind of visible but they're still probably a little bit dark in that scene now i'm going to go to my adjustment brushes you can press k to get there you can also use the menu um, or yeah use the menu like i did and what we're going to do is go down to skin flow now you'll notice the organization of this follows a typical workflow, right? So these are global kind of dodging and burning things that we would do. Then this is stuff that we would do to skin. Then we might do advanced dodging and burning. We might do advanced retouching, all those types of things. So kind of all you do is just go down the options and choose what you want to do and apply it. I'm going to select quick dodge and lift. What this is going to do is essentially lift shadows and tones. We're basically going to paint light right into the image. I want to use a size that's appropriate for my subject. I want to keep the feather all the way to 100, a flow at 100, turn off auto mask and density at 100 with this preset. Notice next to them, it tells you what the flow setting should be. So when you get to advanced dodging and burning, we want to set the flow between 20 and 40. But with everything else, just keep the flow defaulted to 100. Now, with this, I'm going to paint right over Ethan's face and over his body. And magically, it's as if we just added a light source directly to our shot that mirrors the natural light that was already present in the scene. Now, what you will notice is that in certain areas that are dark around Ethan's body, you start to get a little bit of a halo, right? Hold down Alter Option and just use the feathered edge of a larger brush to kind of just remove the halo, okay? And I'm gonna shrink it down just a little bit as we get up here to get more refined. And notice that the way that I'm painting kind of also naturally follows the shadow of the pant leg and, and everything on his body. I'm gonna do the same thing up here in the highlights. I'm gonna shrink it down. You can spend as much or as little time on this as you want, but once you've finished it, Press O so that you can see your mask. That looks good enough for me. I'm gonna hold down Alter Option, click on the mask, and now drag to the right to brighten your subject. Drag to the left to darken, right? The cool thing about this is you'll notice that all the settings on the right are moving exponentially. Those settings were statistically tested as well to make sure that when you're increasing and decreasing, your color and contrast remains equal. Guys, this took me a hell of a long time to do this. So I want to tell you what was done. All right, so that is freaking insane, okay? So that's one layer of just quick dodging and burning that you can do. Now from here, I would go back to my radial filters, grab one, press Shift-M, 
drop that right over Ethan's face and pull it down even more. Now I'm going to fine tune and tweak, get a little bit more exposure, whatever I want to. If I want to add a little bit of highlights, whatever you want to do to the image to fine tune. I think it looks great right now. Okay. And then the only thing I might do is a slight shift in temperature and tint. And let's just see where we want it. I think I want it a little bit more on the cool side and right about there. If you notice that like the highlights of the shirt are getting a little bit blown out, we can actually look and see. It actually isn't blown out yet, but it is getting pretty bright, the highlight on shirts. So what I could do is just hold down alter option and paint this off of the shirt, right? So anything super bright like that, we can just hold down alter option and paint it off. But you know what's even more simple than that? Let me show you. Most people don't even realize you have an extra set of tools inside of your, your brushes called Range Mask. What this is, it's essentially Blend If from Photoshop taken into Lightroom and ACR. So I can tell Lightroom to only apply this effect if the color underneath is a certain color or if the luminance is a certain luminance or we can talk about depth as well. I'm going to select luminance and what I'm going to tell Lightroom is I don't want to apply any of this effect if the brightness is up here in this ultra white range. Okay. So once I click it down one notch like to 99, okay, you'll notice that the shirt is removed. The only problem now is the highlights on his face, which I do want to keep, are also removed. I can try and click on this side to see like, man, I want to apply it everywhere, but I don't want to apply it, you know, and it tries to adjust the luminance mask accordingly. If that's not quite doing it because the skin tone is too close to the shirt, you're just going to go back to painting it off. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and I'm just going to paint this off with a little brush so that the shirt is just a little bit less bright. Okay. I'm going to do it very messily to see that you have quite a bit of leeway. Those settings were also tested because we, we expect everybody to be using their mouse inside of Lightroom. Okay. So we don't want, we don't want to create settings and, and things that are so precise that you have to use a tablet. So it makes these so powerful on the go. But just with these adjustments, look at the image now. This is the original image. This is that dodge and burn look. I mean, this is nutso. Would we think that we could do this in anything other than Photoshop previously? But we did it all in Lightroom and it's all done non-destructively to our images. So that's quick dodging and burning. And I feel like giving you all one more sample of it just so you can see over a different scene because we almost had it. We were almost applying it to a, a different scene. There was a shot from David right here where we did a little bit of it. So let's just refine this a tiny bit more. Okay. So we did this in the last video where we applied dark mode. So we went soft light, dark mode, detail pop. That's where we got to, right? So from here, really all I would do is I'd probably flatten out the, the contrast just a little bit probably bring it down just a little bit. And then now I'm going to go to quick dodge and lift. Now I'm going to dodge and lift painting over the hair, over the skin, kind of everything in the shot that would be affected by a light source, right? This leave right here, if I were just to put light on her, the leaves wouldn't be affected. So I'm going to paint it off the leaves, holding down alter option. I can adjust my strength. And I like this a little bit more on the dark and moody side right here. So I'm going to leave it right there. I can also control the feathered edge. So if I want to just remove this subtly from the, the hair up here, I might just hold down alter option and kind of paint it off that area. So that way we don't get those strong highlights right there. Now I'm going to create a full radial burn. We're going to press shift M so we can control that burn. I'm going to drop it right into the center and I'm going to increase the strength of it. And now we're going to brighten up the image just a little bit more. So now, again, using that quick dodge and burn function, we have this really cool, very different version of that image that we created with that standard soft light, bright soft light, and kind of punchy, right? Fun stuff. Okay, now let's go on to part two. 
Part two is retouching skin. I have a couple quick examples. Again, the presets are gonna be very self-explanatory. This is a shot by David Crew. This is a shot that I actually took a little while back. It's a, uh, a boudoir shot, if you couldn't tell already. So what I'm gonna do right now is let's just get the image kind of roughly processed, right? So this was shot a bit on the warm side. I'm gonna go ahead and apply soft light. This looks nice. Okay, I like it. Again, this is already where it's come from and where it's come to. So what I'm gonna do now is go under skin and flow and now we're gonna start working through some of these options. Smooth skin is gonna actually smooth and reduce skin texture without destroying skin texture. It's beautiful for legs. You can see how when we applied it on the legs, it cleaned up a lot of the detail on the legs. I'm gonna go and create a new application for the chest. And I usually like to create a new application for each area of the body because some of the areas might need a little more or a little less the effect depending on the depth of the camera and also that area of skin. Hold down alter option, click and drag to the left to reduce, click and drag to the right to increase. I'm gonna go right about here. And then I'm gonna do one more for the face. With the face, I'm really just gonna apply it to the forehead and the cheekbones, maybe a little bit of the chin, and hold down alter option. Again, kind of click to reduce, and just look at the difference already in that one single tweak. So in Lightroom, we have smooth skin without killing detail in the pores, right? So we still have all the detail in the pores. Next, I'm gonna click new. We can go to diminish lines, right? So diminished lines is perfect anytime we have lines in the shot that we want to kind of reduce. So yes, you can use it on the, the bags underneath the eyes like here. Um, we can use it on smile lines like here, for example. We can click and drag over it. But really where I want to use it is like necklines like this. And it's just going to reduce those, those lines just a little bit. Okay, it's going to reduce the texture, reduce the detail of those lines a bit. We can also diminish eye bags, which is a little bit more of a strength and effect specifically for bags underneath the eyes. So again, I would come in underneath the eye and just kind of apply this right underneath the eye. And you can see how it just kind of reduces those bags very subtly. Okay, click new. If there's certain areas that are oversaturated, like for example, there's a little bit of oversaturation going on right here where we're getting some of the reds kind of reflected back onto the skin tones, right? I can just click and kind of remove some of that saturation very easily. And it's gonna be very subtle in the way that it's applied. I might even do it to just the legs in general. Okay, you can apply it however you like. Actually, you know what, the legs were okay, except for just those deeper shadow areas. And same thing here, same thing in the neck. Just kind of reduce a little bit. So a very easy way to kind of make for uniform tone and again, you can control this by simply clicking and dragging up or down. If you have to get into detailed work on any of these things, this is where I would go into Photoshop. But we can do most of that work right here. Okay, so intensify detail. This is to turn something into a grungy portrait. Um, works well on skin. I mean, sorry, works well for street, but we don't necessarily want to apply this over like a boudoir model. Not going to be, not going to be good. Not going to be appealing. All right, so those are the basics of skin. Let's take a look at this shot. This is another shot by David Crew. Let's go ahead and do that same process. So soft light, image is already looking really good. I'm gonna apply without a vignette because I don't like the way that it's darkening the edge of her skin down here. And now you can notice those veins we often have uh, on our legs and arms and things. So I'm just gonna go to smooth skin and watch it just clean that up. Like we just clean a lot of that detail right up. I'm gonna go bring it right up to the body. I'm gonna do this quickly. So I'm not even gonna create a new version this time. I'm just gonna go click, drag up smooth all the skin under the chest, the, the face already looks good, everything looks good. Now I'm gonna click here and it looks like here the arm is kind of falling into a different color of light. So I'm just gonna warm this up a little bit so that it matches the rest of the skin tone on the body. Okay, so same thing over here. Maybe the upper kind of chest, or the sorry, the lower chest, the upper abs, and let it kind of fall into the, the everything up there, that looks great. Okay, the leg it was probably a little bit on the cold side, so we need to warm that up a little bit. Again, if we wanna be a little bit more accurate with this, I would probably be applying a new one of these brushes to each of these different areas, so I could have a little bit more specific control. But just in those basic adjustments, so if I turn all this off, look at this. 
that's nutso. All of that without killing the texture. So if I actually zoom in, the texture is still there and present. Now, granted, the, the uh, aperture was very shallow on this. So it was soft to kind of begin with. But look, we still have skin texture. We still have detail in the shot. It's not getting plasticky. So just be sure that you don't turn those up too much. But that's really everything on skin. Now, on occasion, when you apply an HDR effect and your skin tones are a little bit crazy, you can also reduce contrast or DHDR uh, over skin tones when needed. It really shouldn't be needed often. Okay, let's go on to the next step. Let's talk now about advanced dodging and burning. We're gonna use this image. I'm gonna create a virtual copy and we're gonna take what we've done. We're gonna go dark mode and do a detail pop. And this looks really cool. So now let's just go ahead and jump into a little bit more advanced dodging and burning. There's a few different ways of doing this. But what we have in this section is specific settings that will tune into specific tones in the image. So we have dodging that's going to affect mostly the whites, mostly the highlights, the shadows, the blacks, burning the whites, burning the highlights, everything. So it allows us to target specific tones. And I find that the ones that you're going to use most often are probably dodging whites and highlights. And you might sometimes burn a little bit. But usually with dark mode, it's already getting the shadows pretty dark. So usually I just like to focus on brightening the highlights. If I paint this in at 100% opacity, it can often come in a bit strong. There is a trick to this though. We can use a sort of quick dodge and burn method where we apply whites at full opacity. And yes, you can just click and drag and lower opacity, but what I wanna show you is actually the range mask function. So here, I could actually click and drag to pull that effect off of anything that falls in the shadows. So you can watch it as it kind of goes up and it's really only starting to affect the highlights in the image. So that's one way, and we can use the smoothness to kind of choose how hard we want the effect or how we want it to kind of smoothly transition to areas of no effect, right? So this is one way we can have control and sort of do quick dodging and burning, even with the more detailed brushes. Another way, though, is to actually utilize typical dodge and burn techniques that you might do inside of Photoshop. I actually learned these tips and tricks from uh, my friends Pratik Nayak as well as Danny Diamond. And what they'll do is they'll go into Photoshop and when they dodge and burn, they're going to reduce the strength of the effect. And then basically, so what we're going to do is reduce flow to like 30%. And we're going to start with a brush that's a little bit large paint over an area where we want highlight, shrink the brush, and I'm using the left and right bracket keys, and I'm just gonna keep painting as I shrink the brush down. Now what this does is it creates a natural looking highlight. So for example, I might do one click over this larger area and do a smaller click here to create an area of graduating highlights. This is nutso because we're doing this right inside of Lightroom. So I'm gonna create the triangle right underneath the eye, I'm gonna shrink it down, shrink it down even further, and create those nice little graduation in tone, okay? And with each of these, we wanna kind of zoom out. I'm just doing this quickly to show you guys. Shrinking down the brush, okay? And I love doing this over the lips as well. We're gonna go over the lips, first broad stroke, shrink it down for a smaller stroke, and then a smaller stroke. Same thing on this side, get those highlights. I like doing it above the eyes, kind of up here, shrink it down, get the highlights, right in those lashes a little bit. And notice how I'm kind of doing it sort of messily, right? But when you zoom back out, it's crazy. I mean, look at this. This is dodging and burning inside of Photoshop brought right into Lightroom, right? Those are big differences. Now I would probably do the same thing over like the collar and I, I might not want it to be the same brightness, but we can sit here from a, a level that's pretty zoomed out and I can click and create like a highlight over the shoulder, zoom in and go and create those highlights and kind of create a nice little highlight across the collarbone, neckline. Okay, and just kind of get it to the point where still the face is the brightest piece, but we can still see these little highlights in other places, okay? That's the level of, of retouching you can do. And if you wanna add another layer and go even further, you totally can. 
So now what I'm going to do is add in another radial burn. I'm going to grab this. Oops, not a radial burn. Nope, your radial burn. I accidentally grabbed our dodging and burning. And now I'm going to pull this in right over our subject. Okay, I'm going to just change the size and shape of this. And now what we're going to do is add in just a little bit of contrast and brighten the image a little bit. And now let me show you this compared to this shot. Look at this. That's crazy, right? So you have soft light, then you have dark mode with advanced dodging and burning. You can go back through, you can dodge and burn, you can, you can emphasize the highlights in the hair so we can go create a new one. This time what I might do is just paint this in broadly, right? I'll go flow at 100%. I'll paint it in directly over the hair, okay? And then I'm gonna remove it from the face. So make sure the face isn't covered. Hold down Alter Option, make sure none of the face is covered, none of the background. I'm just gonna paint it off. If I like the effect there, great. If I don't, I can click and drag to re reduce it. If I want to have fine tuning control, I can go to Luminance and I can pull it up and off the shadow so it's not affecting any shadow detail. This is the easiest way to pull it off the background, which is also a shadow, okay? Now look at this. From that previous shot, I want you to see what we've done. But it's not finished yet, right? We could take this another step. So what if we wanted to zoom into the eyes? We could either go with fine tuning control in the eyes and just do whites, or we can actually go down to retouch. And that's gonna be in the next section. So now let's continue with retouch. So I'm gonna go and actually whiten the eyes. So let's go and click here, whiten the eyes. This is where I like to apply it first, hold down Alter Option and click to paint it off of the shadowy areas in the shot. So I don't want the, the shadows of the eyes to be brightened up as much as the other areas. Then I would zoom out and see, well, is the effect a little bit too bright or does it look good? It actually looks pretty good. But we're always gonna zoom out to kind of check on it and what we'll probably do at the end is reduce the effect. But let's just keep going right now. Let's keep going with our retouch. Let's go to, um, we'll go to intensify. So eyes enhance detail is really meant for the entire eye. Okay, we'll apply that real quick. This is gonna enhance all the detail kind of around the eye. If you wanna apply it to the uh, eyebrows too, it's totally fine. But this kind of will do a little bit of work on the lashes and on everything. It, it works nicely to kind of sharpen and just increase a little bit. Click new, go to intensify iris. Now I'm gonna click into the iris and I'm gonna shrink down my brush. I'm just gonna paint right around the iris. Hold down Alter Option, paint again off the shadows, paint off the whites to make sure you're not affecting any of the whites. Whoops. Okay. And again, once I've you know applied this, I'm zooming out to kind of check on it and see is it getting too bright? And yes, now it's starting to get to the place where her eyes are just a little too punchy. Now, some of you guys might like, you know, your, your eyes be very bright and punchy. I'll let you guys decide on that yourselves. I kind of like to keep these effects a little bit more on the subtle side. So I'm going to reduce the whitening as well as the other effects. Now let's go new. Let's go ahead and go down to catch lights. I'm going to enhance the catch lights. Just click over them a little bit. This is just going to brighten those catch lights a bit. New. You can go to create catch lights if none exist. This is going to be very powerful if catch lights are already in the eyes. So that's kind of whitening it out. So now liner, I'm going to go ahead and apply eyeliner. This is going to darken the area above the brow. Kind of pull attention right into the eyes. This is literally like just applying makeup now in post. I'm going to make sure that it's not going to affect like the kind of inner area of the eye where it kind of looks like it might be bruised almost if you if you apply it too much. So it's a little bit of shadowing. I'm gonna go down. Let's go a little bit of mascara too. We'll do mascara right over the eyelashes. Okay, we're gonna go new. Okay, now we can do a little bit of lip gloss. So let's do a little bit of lip gloss. And with all these effects, we're painting these on at full opacity, right? Okay, let's see if we want to strengthen that effect. I think a little bit stronger would be good. 
And again, we can always reduce. That's the beauty of doing this. You know, this is so much fun because it's, it's all non-destructive. And so at any point in time, we don't need layers. We don't need anything. We can just go and reduce the effects that we're, that we're creating, right? Okay. We don't really have to do anything with the teeth. We don't see the teeth. Um, if we wanted the list to be more dark and moody, we could. But I like the way it is. The hair is already looking good right now. We already did a little bit of uh, work on the hair. But you also have this hair brush. It essentially does the same thing as what we did with the highlights uh, and whites. So where it's kind of lifting out the highlights, it's lifting out details. It's doing a little bit more than just the whites. It's doing a lot more than just the whites. But since we already have that applied, we're not going to do another one of those. Okay. Let's see if there's anything else that we want to do to this. And I'm, I'm actually good with it, like, right here. This looks super cool. So now, let's take a look at this. So I want you guys to see... We're going to create a virtual copy of our dark mode image. But on this one, I'm actually going to reset out all of our retouching. And we're going to compare those side by side. Okay. Is that not crazy? That's all done right inside of Lightroom. So between skin and between retouch, we have so much work, so many things that we can do inside of Lightroom quickly and effectively be done with an image five minutes and have it be done over the raw file without doing anything destructively or inside of Photoshop. Finally, let's go to part five of this video where I just wanna show you briefly some of the advanced special effects, okay? So if I drop down to the bottom of the brushes, and again, these are designed on typically how you would work through an image. If I get to an image like this and I'm like, you know, I'd really love a flare, go down to special effects. And for these, you're gonna keep your flow between, you know, 50 to 100. And so I'm just gonna drop this down. It's nice to kind of do that because then you can kind of apply it and make adjustments to it as you go. So what I'm gonna do is add a little sun flare right here just by kind of clicking a couple times in this area. Now it's actually very convincing and to get a convincing effect whenever you're doing a sun flare is just to follow the natural direction of light that's already present, right? If you follow the natural direction of light that's already present in image, your flare is gonna look good. So that's one thing, we can add flares just with that effect. The next thing is that we have other special effects tools too. So for example, I'm gonna select the graduated filter. <clears throat> we have the same options. The only difference is the method it's applied, right? I'm gonna go down to bokeh. Now with this, I could actually create a little tilt shift effect just by clicking and dragging up from the bottom. And let's say we want the blur to kind of affect most at the bottom. And we're gonna create a little tilt shift from the top. So what I'm doing is I'm clicking and dragging in different points and places. And then the final one, I'm gonna bring right down and close to them while leaving their faces most sharp, okay? So I'm gonna click this, drag this down. So now when you zoom in on them, it's as if we have this tilt shift effect going right through the center of the, the image where everything else is, is blurred out. Really fun, really easy to do. You can see the, the before and after on this right inside of Lightroom. Now let's go over a couple of the other enhancements, okay? So real quick, I'm gonna grab, uh, let's grab maybe some of our shots from the primer and let's just see which one we wanna apply it to. Let's grab this image. So the funny thing about this image is when you look at it, you're like, man, there's not really anything in this shot, but look, we've retained most of the detail in the shot. If I pull the exposure down, the highlights are there. I mean, we have a little bit of uh, you know, blown stuff up here, but we have clouds in the shot. So the exposure should have been like right here uh, based on this camera. So again, it's about one stop bright. So I'm gonna go HDR natural and automatically you start seeing some of the highlights coming back or some of the tone coming back in the, uh, in the, in the clouds. So now what we're gonna do is go radial burn. I'm gonna do a narrow one. I'm gonna drop it right over the couple. I'm gonna pull it in just a little bit more. And now we start to see more clouds. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add these little enhancements. So enhancements do exactly what they describe. So sky and cloud enhancements, well, they basically just, I'm gonna put this on 100%, they're basically just gonna reveal and enhance sky and clouds, okay? So I can bring that in, and let's see if there's anything else we wanna to do to it, okay? We can also add detail to clothing, we can also add detail to nature and everything else, tattoos, body art, all that kind of enhancements are there and available for you. But 
this is kind of crazy because you know with a couple clicks in less than 30 seconds we turn this image from this shot into this shot so I'm just gonna create a virtual copy of that so you guys can actually see that and let's go pop this into our enhancements so I can save this out too okay so look at this now if we wanted to put everything together watch this I'm gonna do one more version just to show you how we could take this image using the same tools I'm gonna go soft light and flip it to dark mode okay now in dark mode I'm gonna reduce the brightness of it quite a bit now I'm gonna go and jump right into quick dodge and burn this is my favorite tool because it's just so easy click over the face kind of roughly painted in <clears throat> I'm gonna remove from the background when I get to a face that's over you know the a background that's similar in tone this is where you just want to zoom in and just get a little bit more refined with your brush edge to kind of paint over the face okay it doesn't happen that often but it will happen and you have to know how to do that okay I'm gonna click and kind of just drop it off this side all right now I'm gonna create this moody image where we're gonna deepen the tones I'm gonna to add in my radial burn I'm gonna pull this right down and oops I'm gonna pull this right down and over my subjects and maybe flatten the contrast just a little bit and warm this up a little bit so I might even add a little bit of pinks and a little bit of warmth to it and now look look at the difference now between these so there's not a right or a wrong way to edit this is really your artistic vision and what we want to do is make tools that allow you to get to that vision no matter what your starting point is and here was our starting point actually so here's that raw file here's the bright HDR version of this here's the dark kind of HDR version of it all right that's it everyone I hope you guys enjoyed these two tutorials I hope they kind of opened up what's possible here now go and create join our groups on Facebook there's links to them on the site as well as in your emails with purchase join the groups this is where we want to feature your work and as you're creating images we want to give them a place to be recognized and featured and seen by other people in the community so join up we'll see you guys there